this session, we're going to learn from Eliza Monks. Eliza lives and paints in Brooklyn, New York. Her paintings have been the subject of numerous solo and group exhibitions in museums ranging from the United States to Germany. She earned her master's in fine arts from the New York Academy of Art, where she now serves in the board of trustees. Her TED talk about her work is featured in TED.com. Yeah, that um, inner critic can be uh, problematic. Um, you've got to get that under control as well. Um, so I have a mentor in my life, Vincent Desiderio, who I've trusted for advice for decades now. And he will talk about, you know, definitely making art from a place of love and passion. But when you are in your studio and you execute it, you do it as though you have ice water in your veins. I love this expression and I use it often. I think of it as a, almost a mantra when I'm working because, again, this is the difference between the professional and the amateur is that you are stone cold, like emotionless when you are working your technique, when you are executing the vision. You know, the vision comes from um, all of the depths of your passion and love and heart and pain or whatever it is you're drawing from. But to make the work is not an emotional thing. It's work. You know, it's discipline. It's, it's work. I mean, it takes getting to the studio and, and devoting the time and having the commitment. You don't wait for inspiration. That's not a professional. You know, you have to, you have to just get serious about figuring out how to work on your work. So, you know, someone asked me, Recently, like I, I was with the um, recent graduates from the New York Academy and, the, and the, what do you do when you feel un, unmotivated or, or if, you, if you have a critic in your mind? And I'm like, I don't, I just don't. Like there's no, I just don't have a place for it. It's not, it's not gonna work, there's, I'm too busy. You know, there's too, many, there's too many deadlines. There's too many things I wanna make. There's too many things that, I mean, I have empty canvases everywhere and they need to be filled. So I've decided, I've decided to stay motivated. I've decided to work on my work and to not be emotional about it, to not be like, do I get tired? Of course I get tired. I get exhausted. So take a nap and then get back to work. You know what I mean? But to be upset or frustrated or any of those things is almost like I almost think of it like a kid in a candy store who can't get what they want. And then that goes back to that mindset of, of like being resent, resentful of missed opportunities or things like that. It's like, you don't get to act that way when you're a pro. You just don't. Nobody wants to work with somebody who, who is that way or who's complaining. You don't get to complain in the professional life. You don't. You have to stay curious and grateful and excited and dead serious about your work and, and be working on it. We don't, like as professional artists, we don't sit around talking about how hard it is and how frustrating, like, yeah, we could be challenged in our paintings and struggle, but we go in there like we're fighting the good fight. I'm battling it out tonight. You know, this is, this is like the battle of the century right here in the studio, but there's no, there's no like, oh, I'm giving up or, oh, that I can't do this anymore. It's just try this, try this, try this, throw more stuff at it. There's all of these tricks I have, like I'll take a picture of it and then I'll look at it, look at the picture, I'll reverse it, I'll look at it in a mirror, I'll show it to some of my colleagues, show it to some of my, my artist friends and see if they have any suggestions. I'll turn it upside down. Maybe I'll just turn it against the wall facing away from me for a month or a week or a day um, and work on something else, you know, but Honestly, what the, the best thing, if I'm stuck, if I'm feeling stuck, as I go back to the vision, um, and that's something that also you create in your mind and you have to really work on. So it's kind of like a self-actualization technique, you know, but you're painting it in your mind, you're, you're finishing it in your mind. And yeah, it, it, it's almost like you have to ask the question instead of thinking, God, this is so hard. I can't stand this. I can't do this anymore. There's no, there's no result in sight. It's not going to work. I'm failing or all the other things that um, that voice could possibly say. You ask the questions, what do I want this to look like? 
well, how do I want this to be resolved? How, do, how can it be resolved? What are the possibilities? What are the options? What are some of the techniques that I could try? And what would they do? Um, you have to come up with solutions and then just experiment with the solutions. It's just where you put your focus, you know? And then if all of that fails, sometimes it's just, it's a matter of fantasizing about the painting being finished. And if it helps imagining it hanging in a beautiful gallery or in a beautiful home or a beautiful museum or whatever it takes, but to just start imagining that it is finished, somebody's loved it and bought it and taken it home with them. And you've gone to their house to see what it looks like in a nice frame. And so it's a matter of like thinking, well, wait a second, I can't frame, I can't hang it the way it is, you know, cause it's not finished yet. So what will it look like? So those are some of the things that I, I employ to get me unstuck, but definitely there's just no time to sit and stomp your feet and say, this is too hard. It's not fair. You can't, 